Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Final Cut Pro 10 FX to mimic the glass diffusion effect that you get when using Black Frost or Pro, or Pro Mist filters. A uh, quick note on what Black Frost and Pro Mist is. Uh, you can always tell whether it's been used by looking at the bokeh in films just like when you can can tell whether they've used anamorphic lenses or not. So this is a piece of footage that, um, from um, a commercial I shot in Sweden. As you can see in the bokeh here, there's a small pattern. This pattern is basically showing that I used uh, a diffusion filter. Uh, to understand what it does, there's small bits of metal inside the um, in, inside the inside the filter, and when light hits the filter, hits these little pieces of metal, they create um, like a small glow. Um, around the around the point source, and they essentially lower the contrast. So they lower contrast on point sources in in a way. Um, it can create it can create quite a nice effect, and um, especially with digital with digital cameras, uh, it gives you that. It, it just helps with the roll off into highlights because the highlight starts sooner, um, and it also has it has like a feathered edge, you know, kind of like what you would possibly do with a, with a Photoshop image. Uh, when you Photoshop an image, you know, when you can use the feathering effect to um, modify when something comes into play or not. And that's kind of what the diffusion filters do um, when you're shooting uh, with, with your camera. Now, to get the same effect in uh, Final Cut Pro 10, uh, it's, not, it's not that difficult. Um, and it's, it's got a fair degree of control. Um, it's done all the time um, in big budget films. Because you can't use these filters at all times, um, you know. Like for example, like the opening of um, of Drive, there's absolutely they can use filters all the way through. But uh, a film like Avengers with lots of green screen and special effects and tracking markers and etc. etc. You you wouldn't really use diffusion filters. You put it in later if needed. Um, so here's a piece of footage from uh, a commercial I shot, and this is just here just to give you an idea. Of the diffusion, as you can see with these headlights here that I'm rewinding back, if you watch, you see you see that little glow around the light. That's diffusion coming into play. Um, anyway, I downloaded the uh, John Wick trailer because let's face it, that image is much much better than my man sitting in a car. Now let's um, let me show you how to achieve a similar effect in here. In fact. This film is probably not the best example because it's, a, it's it was shot with anamorphic lenses, so there's an anamorphic flare going on, and they probably used diffusion as well. But this will get this is a good uh, good scene with a lot of point sources to point out the the effect I'm I'm trying to help you create. So the first thing to do is bring in the odd. Oh, actually, sorry, the first thing to do is to duplicate your footage. Um, so right to the end, Command Copy, uh, Command C to copy, and then Option V to paste as a connected clip, and then Option click somewhere on the footage where you think it's relevant. I'm going to go here with the headlights blown. Uh, turn off the bottom footage by pressing V. Okay. Now bring in your Luma here onto the top footage, uh, and like just to show you where how this is this is this is working, I'm going to bring in a generator underneath. Uh, and as you can see, so as you can see, what what the what the Luma Kia do, is doing is it's attacking in this particular instance, it's attacking the the darkness in the image and it's eradicating it. Um, we're going to just help that out. We're going to try and make it so it's only the bright sources that's really on display. So we've got the headlights here, we've got the reflections on the on the grill in the background now on the floor. Maybe we don't really want to have that there. There we go, say so maybe about there. You can see most of the image is now green. Uh, we're going to help that out. I'm going to try and uh, give it a little bit of a boost by bringing in a Gaussian blur to blur this image. So blurring this image makes these point sources softer. Uh, as you can see, this is the way the this is the way the highlights would appear on with a diffusion filter. Um, now, by adjusting your Luma here. You can sort of see how you can bring some in, uh, bring more in. You can also play with the blur amount uh, to increase or decrease detail. Uh, and then lastly, I'm going to bring in uh, the color corrector. 
right down the bottom here. And on the exposure tab, we're really just going to bring up the highlights just a tad. These three things give you some control. It also helps you uh, separate out the, the footage. Okay. All right. So I come back down. I'm going to switch off the green generator. And I'm going to switch back on the other footage. Now by toggling this, you can see the effect. It's very subtle, but you see how it gives you that, that glow. Now you can adjust it after the fact. So there's a couple of ways of adjusting it. So you can adjust the blur of the effect. Uh, you can also you can increase the range that it affects. As you can see, watch the head, watch the um, the license plate there. See it? it starts to glow. So you can control the uh, the range of the image that is affected. You can uh, you can alter the amount that is blurred, and then via your um, uh, color correction board in the exposure tab. You can change the values within within the waveform um, to to increase the range or decrease the range that the Luma Kia looks at and attacks. So uh, by you know by dropping by dropping the exposure, I mean I wouldn't go below fifty, but dropping the exposure back to normal changes the range that the Luma Kia attacks. So you see how it's putting it up, increases it. So it's, it's like a way of we've we're in this instance we've we've isolated the point sources, we've uh, applied a blur, so we've uh, we've we've sort of changed how how much uh, how much of um, we've changed the range that they're in focus technically, um, and then with the Lumic here we change the range that the actual effect um, targets the image um, and uh, helps it yeah and and gives and applies the effect to. Uh, so yeah, let's come back down here. There you go. I think that's um, I think that's fairly cool. To be fair, it doesn't affect anything else. And what you can do, just to just to show you how how much extra control you can have, I'm going to add in another color corrector. It doesn't stop you, for example, um, adjusting the contrast of the rest of the image because you've now isolated these these effects. And as you can see, it doesn't affect the rest of the image. It's only attacking highlights, and you still have, sorry, you still have control of how you process the image yourself. I'll show you how it affects. So you can you can really see it here actually. You know, and this is when you might might want to start paying attention to. You know, do you want the jacket to be uh, to be affected or not? And there's nothing stopping you with this image here. You can either increase or decrease the range, or you can draw you can draw an actual mask around the the area that you don't want included on the top footage, because it, it, the detail is actually in in the lower is in the lower um, is in the main storyline. It's not within the, um, the shall we call the effect. The effect timeline one above, so it does give you some some uh, some good control. And uh, yeah, anyway, I hope that's helped people um, with with, uh, with your creative with creative um, exploits. Um, I do do fully suggest that you um, you do pick up some diffusion filtration at some point and have a play with it. You know, rent rent it from a rental house uh, before you uh, embark on. On spending and buying it. I mean, myself personally, I I, I very rarely shoot without um, like Schneider Black Frost uh, in the camera. Uh, usually, somewhere around between one eighth, a quarter, and a half strength. Um, there's a there's that's an entire an entire topic to look into. It does change with uh, focal length and and um, the amount of light being used, the type of effect you're gonna you're going for, etc. etc. Um, but yeah, just so you can you can see that you can mimic this in post, and you can get some some control over it. Um, it's the kind of thing that if you're um, an aspiring DP and you're stepping into a colorist in, into the color booth with uh, with your director and the and the colorist, it might be something you want to understand how you can play with. 
uh, so that you can communicate with him. And if you're shooting your own stuff and you're by yourself, it, it could be um, a nice a nice way of just giving your your project a little bit of visual polish. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, stay tuned for more. Have a good day. Bye.